Good morning and welcome to the See Me Covenant live stream. Uh, we're so glad that you're here with us this morning and wherever you are, um, I hope that you've got a good cup of coffee with you and that you're going to stand with us as we begin worship this morning. So um, I do encourage you, think about taking a moment to take some of the things around you that can just be so distracting when we're watching something at home especially uh, and see if you can tune out some of those things and really lock in as we, uh, as we begin to worship together and step into this time that we have together. Sing with this heart. With this heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. I will bring a sacrifice. And I lay me down on my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, and all my heart, this much is true. There's no lack apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Let him go. Let him go of my pride. Giving up all my rights. Take this life and let it shine. Oh, take this life and let it shine. And I lay me down on my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, and all my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, lay me down, lay me down. And it will be my joy to say your will. Your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, always. It will be my joy to say. Your will. Your way, it will be my joy to say. Your will, your way, it will be my joy to 
and say your will, your way, always. And I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, and all my heart this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, lay me down, lay me down. You guys can take a seat. Hey kids, it's Pastor Matt. This month we are talking about patience. Patience is waiting for something that's worth it. And you know what? I'm waiting for some delicious cookies right now. And when you have to wait, sometimes it's hard. It's hard to wait for things. And our Bible story today comes from the story of, of Jesus. And he is brought to the temple as a tiny little baby. And there's this guy named Simeon who has been waiting for the Messiah for a really long time. And it is good for us to remember that God is with us when we wait. All right, let me check if my cookies are ready. Let's see. Yep, looks good to me. All right, guys, have an incredible day. Let's continue in worship. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest trial and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving sees my comforter. My all in all, here in the love of Christ I stay. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in faithless gave this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came. To say, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was laid. Here in the death of Christ, that we labor in the ground. His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then burst forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse and lost its grip on me, for I am he. with the precious blood of Christ. Sing out no guilt, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final death, Jesus commands me. 
Good morning, See Me Covenant Church. I'm Pastor Matt. It's good to be worshiping and praising God together this morning. I would love for you to take a moment and to fill out our digital connect card. Let us know how we can be praying for you. Uh, let, let us know in the comments that you're here and, uh, and greet one another in the comments as well during this time. I want to let you know about something amazing that is happening, and it's called communion. Uh, actually, we are doing communion today, and it is amazing. It's incredible to be celebrating communion. So if you don't have your supplies, uh, grab those and, um, and bring them, and we're going to be celebrating communion after the sermon today. But we are partnering with a number of churches in Simi Valley, and we're going to be doing a family event for uh, for groups of people. Now, this can be young and old together in a car. It can be a group of friends in a car. And it's going to be a semi-scavenger hunt around Simi Valley to different church sites to do activities and to do challenges to win some epic prizes. Actually, we have this video to uh, show you that is uh, of me and a few of our other youth pastors in Simi Valley uh, who are helping organize this event. Uh, why don't you check this out? Hey, Simi Valley, I'm Matt. We are so stoked to have uh, a time to be together for families and youth for Easter. We want you to gather up together, get your peeps, and come check out this incredible event with us. We will be heading around town to various locations where there will be different challenges that you can do and get different prizes as well. Uh, it is gonna be called the Simi Extravaganza. We are so excited. This event is happening Saturday, April 3rd in various locations across Simi Valley from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So mark your calendars. And we're also going to have so many amazing different prizes, including ear pods, gift baskets, and so many other things. I am stoked to see you there. Wow. I am so excited. If you... Um, are looking for something to do that's uh, COVID friendly, that's careful and yet fun for your family. Would love for you to consider uh, bringing them to do that event or inviting somebody or passing the word along and letting them know this is about the church being the church together in Simi Valley and having fun together uh, right before Easter on April 3rd. So would love for you to join us for that. I'm going to pray and we're going to hear from the word 
uh, as we continue our study in 1 Thessalonians on vital faith from Pastor Kurt. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father God, we ask and we beseech you to be with us this morning as we come before you. May you make our hearts be open. May you help us to intersect with your Holy Spirit this morning. Would our world uh, collide with your presence? Would we be made aware and made known and be spoken to? And and we may our ears be open to the things that you have for us today. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the adoration. And we ask that you would help us to see you and to trust you today. We pray this in your name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. My name is Pastor Kurt. Glad to have you with us this morning. And I want to say, you know, this Easter event is going to be really great. I'm excited about it. I hope I win some AirPods. And I just want to give some props to Pastor Matt. You know, that was his idea. And I love it that it's gives us a chance to do something that is COVID safe, that, in, that talks about Easter, that gets us all together, and on top of it, brings churches from around our area all together. I think it's a really terrific thing. It's really great. Well, odds are that you and I, we are never going to be famous. We, we are not going to be mentioned in the history books, unless, of course, you count if a history book says around the year 2021, there were about 350 million Americans. You're included in that, and along with a few other people that you might know. No, we are not going to be mentioned in the history books, and probably not even if you are doing something amazingly good. You know, I don't know what you've been up to during this COVID time. It is entirely plausible that you have set up some kind of research lab in your garage during COVID time, and you have found the cure for cancer. But, <laughs> but even if so, I'll tell you, even people who do amazingly good things end up getting forgotten. Uh, I was talking with Pastor Matt this last week, and he said, you know, we know who Mother Teresa is, but think about it. There are so many other Sisters of Mercy who are working in Calcutta even now, and we don't know their names. They are as uh, forgotten in the world as you and I are. Of course, not forgotten by God, but we don't know their name. They're nameless like the rest of us. And I think even one day, Mother Teresa uh, will not be as readily known a name as it is now. Great people can still be forgotten. You and I, unfortunately, the only chance we've got is probably to do something really terrible. (laughs) But let's not do that. I'm not advocating for that. I'm not encouraging you to do that or recommending it. You and I know that being well-known or being famous is not the same thing as being significant. Being well-known or famous isn't the same thing as being significant. You know, sports stars and other big personalities, they, they make a big splash on the front page of the newspaper. For those of you who don't know what that is, a newspaper used to be a way that people would get the news before that media was forgotten. <laughs> but the people that you and I count as being the most significant people in our lives are the ones who don't just grab for attention on our news feed, They're probably people who have actually quite literally fed us, right? Whether that is our parents or our grandparents or maybe those friends of yours who love you enough to take you out and buy you dinner for your birthday. So so we know intuitively that true significance isn't how much noise we make, but it's in the actions that we take. It's not in the noise that we make, but it's in the actions that we take. So... Really, rather than seeking after fame, I think what you and I, what we really want is real significance. We want to be significant. In comparison with significance, fame is pretty empty. Significance is to have a life that really means something. To, it, we mean something to loved ones. We mean something to the world. We Really, we kind of are significant to ourselves. I want to know, do you want to be significant? And I want to say, I think you should. Because being significant means that your life did matter. That your life makes a difference. And you should know, you, your life mattered enough that God would give his life for you. 
Every single person who is here today listening to this, your life has a potential to be significant to others. We're in a series, as Matt mentioned, called Vital Faith, where we are looking through the book of 1 Thessalonians. This, the Apostle Paul wrote to this group of people who had only recently started following Jesus, and they were being put through the ringer. They had pressures from family and friends who said, hey, I don't, I don't want you getting involved in this Christ thing. I don't like that very much. And there were, they also had this internal unrest as well. They were, they were operated, operating in uncharted territory. They were among the first Christians ever, and They didn't have a map telling them where to go. And as we've gone through this series, I think I have, I hope that you have seen that that for us to look at these other people who are feeling pressure from the outside and the inside has helped us to be able to navigate our own world today and for us to be able to feel like, hey, my outside world, my inside world is in tumult, is in flux, and I need to see that. And I can see that, that like these people, I want to learn to chart a faithful life even in a place where there is no map. The tone that we're getting from this letter has been really encouraging. I, I've, Paul has heard reports of how they're living and that they're doing a, a great job. They're being faithful and they are creatively honoring God through their words and through their actions. As an aside, I want to say, I think I've seen that in you guys as well. I have heard about things that you're doing in your words and in your actions that have been faithfully, you've been faithfully trying to honor our God in in creative ways in tumultuous times. Do you want to be significant? Do you want your life to matter? What we see in our passage today, it matches with what we've observed in our own experience, that the the truly significant life is one that is marked by a pattern of generous love that glorifies God. So a significant life is one that, that is marked by this pattern of generous love that glorifies God. Let's read our passage for today from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 9 to 12. Now, about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more, and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody The truly significant life is marked by a generous love that glorifies God. Uh, This is not, though, the path to significance that our culture would have us choose. What our culture tells us is that if we want to have significance, if we want to, is that we need to craft it. We need to create it. We need to curate it. And we need to, ongoing, we need to groom that and even once we've finished our masterpiece of, of an identity, we find out that it's fragile and that we needs, it needs constant maintenance as well. I think that the younger generation is especially under a lot of pressure for them to craft their identity. To, they have to chart their own path in, in a world of, of increasing choices, of uh, pressures in sexuality, to decide who they are. And and I'm saying decide. I don't think they discover nearly as much as maybe you or I might have done in previous generations to find out kind of who you are and the ins and outs of life, the bumps and bruises, to be able to understand maybe who they are, who they're not. Uh, I think that a lot of kids today are under pressure to to figure out what their identity is and almost put it on like a garment that they need to wear. And they are, it's reinforced by this constant pressure to create an image to the outside world. And although that may be even more, there may be more pressure on younger people to do that, you and I, we experience a lot of that same kind of pressure that I myself, I want to project a certain image to the world that I, that I want people to know about me or think about me. And I need to curate it, protect it. And it's like we believe that if I have this carefully curated image of myself, 
then I'll get to have a place in the world and that will be protected. And then that will then lead to me having some kind of significance. But the gospel turns that whole equation on its head. That we have been given standing with God. We're, we're welcomed into the kingdom. We're, we're given God himself. We're, we're given a seat at the table. We're invited in. And that ends up being our true foundation. We don't need to create an identity. We, we're in him. And that we, based on this amazingly generous love that God has given us, not puffing up an image, but really this solid thing, that that is a basis for a substantive life and that we get to live a life of significance. Instead, it comes out of our identity instead of having to create something. It takes a lot of pressure off. In our passage, we see that, well, let's, let's start actually at the verse just above what we read. It says this, it says, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Verse 8. So every believer has been given God's Holy Spirit. Every follower of Jesus, when you give your life to the Lord, that you are given the Holy Spirit. And we have it. It's solid. It's in us. And that Holy Spirit works in us. In fact, Paul says, verse 9, Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. From what Paul has heard about their love for one another, I think he, he sees, hey, this is an area that they are getting it. They, they're killing it. They're doing it. They know, they're, and they're responding to God's work in their lives. Jesus says something similar about this Holy Spirit work in our lives in John 16, verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will guide you into all the truth. This Holy Spirit is in these Thessalonians. And I, I see a lot of parallels between Jesus and his departure and leaving the Holy Spirit to them, uh, leaving his disciples, and, and also Paul leaving the Thessalonians and him being forced away from them. But I don't really have time for that. And we maybe should at some point in the future do a whole study on uh, John 16 to 18 about the Holy Spirit. But what we can say is, the Holy Spirit guides us into truth. And, and truth isn't just head knowledge, but guides us into truth, a true living as well, doing the right things. And for these Thessalonians, in their love for each other, Paul has, he's seen the evidence that they are working, they are cooperating with the Spirit who is leading them into truth, who is leading them into right ways of living in their lives. Uh, individually and more collectively. Because their, their love isn't just for their own individual church. It says, hey, you guys are, are thinking about the rest of your community. Verse 10, and in fact, you do love all of God's community throughout Macedonia, yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, do so more and more. Paul's saying, hey, you guys get it. Great, good. You are learning that faith in Christ is about God's love changing us, becoming this firm foundation that from which we can go and love other people, that we, we can go out to others. This, the act of love of heading to other people and beyond into the, the whole world. And in this passage, we see Paul keeps talking about this idea of love. Uh, and love here is not, it's not just a mushy feeling. How, how, how can Paul know that they love everyone in Macedonia? You can ask that question. Well, the Holy Spirit is at work in these Thessalonian believers, and, and Paul can see it because their lives are opening up to other people around them. And the proof of their love is that they are caring for the actual physical and emotional needs of those people who are around them. They're, they're likely, I would think, that they are actually going to some of these places around them. They're, they're sending food. They're, they're giving money. They're using their energy, they're using their time to care for some of these other people. Love, love is like the wind, actually. You, you don't see it, but you, should, you do see the effects of it. If somebody tells you that they love you, you should be able to see some concrete evidence that that is true. And for these Thessalonians, their love is touching 
their pocketbook, is touching their balance sheet. And that, that takes courage. It takes, it takes a certain amount of resolve to make that happen. It also takes courage because their love also looks like preaching the gospel, speaking words of truth to other people. Uh, do you remember, think back to chapter 1. I can read it to you. Chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. And so you, Thessalonians, you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out to, from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. So their faith in God wasn't just that people said good things about them. Hey, you know, yeah, these are great guys. They're really terrific. These are some amazing people. There, there are some women of faith over there. No, they, these believers, there are believers now all across Macedonia and Achaia. They didn't just appear out of nowhere. There are people coming to faith, and they're coming to faith because these believers in Thessalonica have been going out there and telling them the good news. They're the ones pre- preaching that message. I wonder what it would look like for us to have this said about us. Uh, I think our Macedonia and Achaia would be our surrounding regions. You know, here in Ventura County, uh, over in the San Fernando Valley. I think if Paul had written to us, he would say, Hey, see me Covenant Church. You love all of God's family in Ventura County. You have become a model to all the believers in Ventura County and in the valley. Gosh, I I I wish, I hope that that can be said about us. May we even judge our own actions by this. I, I pray that we will look at our budget and our time and say, hey, are we, are we living up to the values that we say that we want to have? And we should be able to see it, see the effects of it. Generous love here in 1 Thessalonians is a response to God's love in us. It's, it's anchored in us by the Spirit who dwells in us. Um, but it is extended out by visible acts. Our attention and our energy toward others end up getting translated into caring for people's needs, both physical and spiritual. Our love gets translated into caring for people's needs, both physical and spiritual. As I thought about this, this week, I thought, wow, this, this is really the one that hit my heart. I thought, Gosh, Kurt, if you're going to love someone, if you're going to say that you love someone or something, some, something or someone, it, it needs to be demonstrated. It needs to be able to be seen. It, it needs to get translated. Kurt, it needs to get translated into caring for people's needs, both physical and spiritual. And you know what it's going to look like? It's going to look like, this translation is going to look like sweat. It's going to look like money. And it's going to look like courageous witness. It's going to look like sweat because it, sweat is a great all-encompassing term for us using our energy for something good. It's, it, it's all the people in our church like Phyllis Wilson who have been doing cool things, using their sweat. Phyllis has been working at the f- free clinic and working on their board to provide health care to people in need. Who, who, and so I just want to say, hey, happy 50th anniversary to the free clinic. And I know that Phyllis isn't the only one who's working there. I know a lot of you have been deeply involved with them. But I, may God bless that ministry and that work. I'm glad. And I, I mention that specifically because I know that, that you guys have put some energy into that good work. Sweat and money. I, you know what? I know that my kids love fast food and video games in part because almost every dollar of allowance that they get goes to those two things. Maybe candy. You can throw candy in there too. Uh, they our money is like a vote for the things that we care about. And I, I know that we will, we will actually care more. I care more for the things that I give some money toward. I, my, if I put my money there, then I care about it. It's great. <laughs> it's a great way for me to vote with my money, turn my attention to something. And I, I want to say thank you to everyone who has been faithfully giving to our church to keep this ministry going, even in difficult times. I hope that you are blessed by it. But we want it to be a blessing to more and more people around in our valley and in neighboring areas. Also, finally, courageous witness. Our energies are spent also sharing the good news about Jesus. Uh, I, I have a friend who is 
kind of somebody who uh, does a lot of good things, to use a, a kind of a Wizard of Oz term, a good deed doer, something like that, right? And this is somebody who is generous, does a lot of cool things. And I think it would be easy for other people just to say, hey, she's just a really nice person. Wow, what a great person she is. And she told me that she tries to talk about her faith, especially when somebody compliments her as, or talks about things that she does. Because she says, you know, if other, other people, if they just see her actions, if you just judge by her actions, their interpretation of it is she's a good person. So it is good for us to testify by our actions, and we're getting to that in just a second. But she also says, I need to follow it up with my words, because their interpretation of what I do is about me, and I want them to know that it's about how God has changed my life and what he's done in me. Uh, that's, that's, she is courageously trying to speak about Christ in her life, find opportunities to do that. And, and so knowing that, knowing that uh, we are trying to work for God's glory and that needs to be done through our sweat and through our money and through our courageous witness, um, I think that helps us to understand a bit better verses 11 and 12. He says, And to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, you should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. If we want to be truly significant, then our lives should demonstrate a pattern of generous love that gives glory to God. And here in these couple of verses, we see that we are encouraged to be industrious, to, to do some work. Each of us needs to make a contribution somehow to get in the fray. And, and you know, I know that some of us are unemployed uh, and I also know that there are some of us who in our community here are really like long-term unemployed people who like to tend to use the more friendlier term uh, retired. Um, but <laughs> and I know that there are others among us who are just super busy. All of us, we're trying to figure out how can we use our skills? What does it mean for each of us? Well, in the next chapter, in chapter 5 of First Thessalonians, we get a little bit of helpful direction. Paul says, in 514, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Warn people who are idle and disruptive. You know, you can be unemployed, you can be retired, you can be busy without being idle and disruptive. The, the opposite of idle and disruptive is what we see in 411 here in, in our passage. It says, mind your own business and work with your hands. Mind your own business and work with your hands. Don't be idle. Don't be disruptive. It, it's, it's people quietly working to make God famous. Working for other people's good instead of being idle and disruptive. So we each have to be industrious in some way. Not, that means, you know, don't wait for somebody else to tell you you've got a job to do. You've got something you can do. Oh my gosh, I lost my voice. <laughs> <coughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. He's back. <laughs> I need a glass of water. All right, I'm back. Just needed a little glass of water. Woo, okay. It's, it's people working for God's fame and for other people's good versus being idle and disruptive. We each have to be industrious. <laughs> Don't wait for somebody else to tell you, hey, you've got a job to do. I want you to get engaged to do that thing. I'm willing, the leadership, we are willing to help you to find a place where you can serve and, and you can help. But find something you love. Find something you're good at. And find a way for that to benefit other people. I have seen people who have been experiencing unemployment during this COVID time who are serving and doing amazing things. I, I can point to one retired guy in particular. I just want to say thanks to Arlen Hanberg for his work and doing woodworking, giving out crosses, helping people. He even, he even actually redid the cross that we've been using outside for our worship service. Thank you for that. Repairing, working, doing something he loves, blessing others. <clears throat> 
maybe you feel like your plate is totally full. Maybe you are a mom with littles and uh, you think to yourself, gosh, I, have, I don't have any energy for one more thing. And so what does it mean for you to mind your own business and work with your hands? Well, of course, it means doing all the million things that you do as a mom all the time. But, but maybe you could invite some other harassed and helpless mom to come along with you as you go to do something you're already going to do, to go to the park, whatever that may be. Talk about life. Talk about faith. Pray. Exalt Jesus. Why should we do that? In, in the text it says, so that our life will win the respect of outsiders. The idea is that the people will be able to see the example of a faithful Christian and, and know more about what it means to actually follow Christ. To, it, that, that the things that they've assumed about what it means to be a Christian can be turned around in their minds. That your lifestyle is going to break down prejudices and serve to God's glory. So in what we do and what we say, we are always testifying. Let's, let's always be witnessing, saying something about what life in Christ looks like, using our words, using our actions. And secondly, it says that we should do it so that we're not dependent on others. Maybe you, maybe right now you need to lean on some other people, and that is okay. Maybe you need to lean on them emotionally or financially. That's okay. But our goal, our ambition, is that we would be able to make our contribution to the community, that we would be able to, to give financially, to give emotionally to other people, to care for them, to, to be stable enough in both of those areas to be able to care for other people. Now, I don't, I don't want us to miss this. Our, our culture tells us that if you've got enough money, you've got a standing, you've got a place. If you've got enough money, then you are significant. Our culture tells us that, that if you are famous enough, then if you've got enough people who think about you and, and like you, then you have significance in the world. That if you have a certain type of job, not just any job, if you have a certain kind of job, then you are somebody who is significant. But that's not the direction that God comes at this thing from. God says, you know, caring for the needs of others, we do that. So we, we need to give of our money and our time and our energy to other people. That is a significant life. That, that it's not about being famous. He says even lead a quiet life. It, it's working so that God is famous. And working so that we can give our money away. And all of that gives us significance. And it all comes from God's work in us out to other people. We're not creating it to have it. It's this pattern of life. He even says in here that a pattern of life may win the respect of outsiders. It's a respectful thing. It's significant. And if we live like that, you know what people are going to say about us at the end of our lives? They're going to say, these people were marked by a pattern of generous love that glorified God. People are going to say, they felt cared for by your sweat. They felt cared for by the money that we used for good. They felt cared for by the, the courageous witness that we brought. And that is a significant life. That's a, that's a meaningful life, and it's the life that God is calling us to and that the Holy Spirit is pushing us to. So I, I wonder if you are willing to have a significant life. Are you willing to be challenged in the way that we use our sweat and our money and whether we'll be people who can actually communicate courageously, create, communicate the gospel courageously to other people? Will you be people who will give your life to serve and love other people to be truly significant? Well, when we talk about a life that was marked by a pattern of generous love that glorified God, we think immediately of Christ himself, of Christ who died for us, gave his life for us so that we might be saved. That is the beginning of the Christian life. It is the end of the Christian life. That we are people who worship the resurrected Christ. 
our Lord. If you have your elements with you, why don't you grab your, your wine or juice, grab your cracker, and bring your bread. Let's celebrate together the Lord's Supper. Lord, we pray that we will be people who lead a significant life. And we'll do that because you are the one who led the significant life, the life that changed all others. You are the one who entered into our world. And now you enter into the lives of those who love you and follow you. You are our Lord. And, and you, because of what you have done, your significance allows us to be people who significantly give to others. Not, not, we're, we get freed from having to try to earn anything from that. But we get to wholeheartedly love and give to other people out of the abundance of love that you've given us. May we do that. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples, but he said, this has new spiritual sig- significance. He, when the bread came around, he said, this bread is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take the bread. Let's eat. After their supper was ended, he took the cup and he prayed again. He said, this cup is a a cup of the new covenant in my blood shed for you. Paul says, whenever we do this, we remember Christ's death until he returns. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Triune God, we take these elements to remind us about what it's all about. It's not about us. It's not ultimately about our life. It's about your life, and we give ourselves to you. May we live in worship of you because of your significant life. May may our lives have be of consequence because you are the first consequence. Thank you for this reminder that together we eat, we take in this food like the gospel. We take in, along with believers all around the world and throughout history, we are your people. You make us, make us new again today, we pray in your name. Amen. Let's continue in worship. Well, as we step now into this time of offering, uh, I encourage you to really take this next song that we sing as a time to let Uh, Kurt's words sink in, let that message sink in, uh, as well as that time of communion that we just had, and uh, really think about what those things mean in your own life, Um, and while we have that time, and while we sing this next song, we also have the links available for you on the screen if you'd like to give with us here, Um, and again, be thinking about ways that giving and what that means can be larger than just financially, but think about ways you can be using your time, your skill sets, your energy, your relationships um, to really be a part of of bringing hope um, to the community around us, to each other and to the community around us.
will trust the voice that speaks. And I'm not going to be afraid, because these waves are only waves. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. And I'm not going to fear the storm. You are greater than its roar. I'm not going to fear the storm. No, I'm not gonna fear it all. Peace, peace, still. Say the word and I will. Set my feet upon the sea till I'm dancing in the deep. Peace, peace, still. You are here. Child of God, I 
Thank you for joining us today. I am glad you are with us. I'm glad you're here. I'd love for you to be connected with other people, whether um, here online, send us a message, tell us that you're here, uh, get in contact with me, go to our website, you can email us. I would love to be able to pray for you more personally. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're here. And let me send you off with a blessing. May you this week See the love of God that's in you translated into love for other people in concrete ways through your sweat, through your money, through your bold witness to other people to be courageous. May, may the God who strengthens you make you people who lean on him for all of that. And may it mean that you get to be significant in somebody else's life today. I pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. See ya. We used to be a heavy metal band, mate. And then we found Jesus. And then we thought, let's rock for the rock. I am in the on position. Kurt in the on position. And AirPods. Okay. <laughs> you've got something you can do oh my gosh I lost my voice <coughs> I'm okay I'm okay he's back <laughs> I need a glass of water <coughs> this is, somebody 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 jinxed me after making fun of like don't say anything about it retired people <coughs> I'm okay. Okay. Let me get a glass of water. <clears throat>